Hello folks, how's it going? I'm just gonna hang and um, make sure that we've got some people coming on. Sometimes that takes a few seconds to establish a connection. I can see somebody on Instagram and I can see people on Facebook. Nikki from Gracie's House here, your brand ambassador over in the UK. Or for those of you that are in the UK, I'm the UK brand ambassador. I'm not over anywhere. Barb, hello, my lovely. Let me know where you're watching from. Tell me what you're doing, what the weather's like. Just say hello. Just talk to me, guys. Talk to me. So how's everyone enjoying decoupage week so far? Um, Cheryl from Gold Coast Australia on Instagram. Thank you. So I think we've seen some really, really cool decoupage stuff this week so far, don't you? Um, yesterday, Roz was talking about um, the difference with backgrounds that you can, you know, how the certain colours will show up better on a dark background. Some will be on a lighter background. We've had people blending edges in. So it's been really, really cool. Um, so I'm going to talk about all of the papers. Look at all. This isn't all of them. It looks like a lot. This isn't all of them. But I'm going to talk about the sizes and the differences and things. Um, so we've got someone from frozen Romania. We've got someone from Massachusetts. Very cold and windy as well. Hello, everybody. And hi, Roz, as well. Thank you for, for tuning in, everybody. So, yes, I'm going to talk about the decoupage papers kind of and the differences between them and really kind of go into some detail with you so not about application as such you see applications this is this whole week is about giving you more information than you may have previously seen and hopefully if you haven't tried decoupage before getting you to give it a go so i'm going to start with the small ones so that's these ones here hello laurie so i've got um i haven't got masses of these so i've got two that are still in the paper and these two are original samples um, that I didn't ever have in packaging. So um, see, they've got a bit screwed up because they're, Lulu, you've caught me live, just because they've been in the bottom, bottom of my stash and probably wedged in a drawer. So we've got some beautiful details here. Hi from Montreal, Canada. Oh, lovely, we've got some great places. So I'm gonna show, this one's great to show you. Because it's light, you'll be able to see the light shining through. Can you see all those fibers? That's what makes it a rice paper. Some people, some places call it a mulberry paper. So it's not your traditional tissue paper or, you know, like a, a thin tissue, like a napkin or something like that. This isn't going to um, it behave in quite the same way because it has those fibres in them. So all of these are 11 and a half inches by 16.25 inches, which is 29.21 centimetres by 41 centimetres. So I'm going to get these designs out that I have here. Roz, if you can remember, what's these ones called? These two? You, Roz used this one yesterday, I think. Um, this one here we've got is Twilight Field. So these are really pretty um, designs. So these are kind of more overall, all over patterns. And then we have these ones that, oops, I can't get that one unfolded. I can't, it's... It's not stuck, it is there. And then these are kind of giving you a bit more of um, a design rather than an all over pattern. But it's got these little tile prints and beautiful florals. But look, even on these small ones, can you see the detail and the quality of the prints that we've got going on? How cool and beautiful colors. Um, and then this one is Amiable Roses, which is super pretty. They're all super pretty. Who am I trying to kid? Hi Dee. Um, so again, this isn't like a, a, a just an all over uh, repeating pattern. This one's got more of a design. We've got some beautiful roses, a tile print in the background, but it's kind of faded in places. Really, really gorgeous. And of course, you can see those fibres on those lighter patches. Can you see those? Yes. OK, so that's the, the smaller ones. These are really, really good for a smaller project. So jewellery boxes, or if you've got, say, I don't know, like a vanity or a dressing table that's got some of those little drawers on and you wanna use them on the drawer. So smaller, smaller projects, really, really good starting point. And also you can treat these ones a little bit more like a traditional tissue paper because you can 
you can tear the edges. So those of you that like to tear the edges and then feather those in, this is, this is the thinnest of all of our tissue papers. So you can, you know, it's a more traditional one in the respect that you could do that. Um, you can add texture or you can paint and blend in those edges. On Instagram, they are beautiful. There is some really, really gorgeous designs. So, you know, or you could do um, trays, perfect sort of size for trays. I think these would fit in really nicely. This one I'm going to go back to. Size of drawers, Lulu, exactly, but like small jewellery box size drawers. Um, look at the pretty. There's butterflies. There's some, there's some text. We've got clocks. We've got newspaper print. There's like all the stuffs on this one. Just everything you could want. Some botanical drawings like line drawings, beautiful. So let's move those over. Let me put them over there. Over there. So then this is just, I, this isn't probably half of the range of the standard size tissue papers that we have in the middle. So this is our, this was probably where we began. Um, and I've just pulled out a selection. So these pretty much are 19 inches by 30 inches. Some of them are 19 and a half inches, but it's there or thereabouts. 30 inches is always the bigger. Some of them are kind of more orientated to go towards a landscape. Hi, Laurie. Um, and some of them, love affair. Which one? This one. Oh, do you know what? I'll have to write it in the comments afterwards because I don't have the packaging and the name is escaping me right now. Unless the lovely Roz is there to, to, to shout at me via Facebook what that one's called. I'll, I'll try and come back to you on Instagram. Um, so yeah, so some of the designs are more of a um, portrait and orientation. Some of them, it doesn't matter which way you go. This one's more landscape. So, you know, that one's, uh, the all over ones, you can you can work them either way. So let's let's take some of these out. So this is Tangerine Spring. This is quite a, quite a bold, um, this is a bold design. Look at that. It's got Herb's Memory. Herb's, me yeah, brilliant. There we go. So on Instagram, this one that you liked, the little, the butterflies, Herb's Memory. Thanks, Roz. Um, look at that. She's so helpful. Brilliant. So look at that. It's got quite, um, I do, it's a little bit of a Scandi sort of feel, I think. You know, that kind of half 70s, some really, really bright colours in there. So you'd want to put this one on a white background. Um, you know, like Ros was talking about yesterday, the colour that you, and you can, you can see the patterns coming behind it here. So you can see where there's dark patches, it, it kind of fades the colours. So on these ones where there's a white base, you're best off putting a white background behind it and it will really make all those colours pop. Lulu, you like this one. So that's Tangerine Spring. So these have got a very, very different feel. I'm going to get another one out. So we're talking about the patterns as we go along. Which one should we look at now? I think I'm going to get this one out because we don't see this one very often. And it's quite a, an interesting design. So this one is called Abstract Dream. And it's got a very painterly type of feel. Look at all the different colours and things in there. So you could pick out all sorts from that if you wanted to kind of coordinate, if you were putting this on the front of drawers. So the frame of your drawers, you could do the yellow, you've got turquoise, there's red, there's a kind of purpley tone in there. It's a real abstract, kind of bonkers, but, but, but quite painterly because each, each section does look like a, a paint brush stroke. Um, this, these decoupage papers, this is the medium size, as we said, it's, it's like a dryer sheet or those of you, yeah, Amber, isn't it awesome, this one? You, any of you that have ever done sewing or dressmaking, anything like that, it's like interfacing. It's got that kind of feel. It's strong. You can't really tear this. So, you know, they're really, really good to apply, nice and firm. Um, and they will, you, you can, if you, if you use the right medium, they will go into corners and you can go around curves and things. But there's not much, you can't really stretch these ones. So it's all about how you want to apply. Um, let's just fold that one up. So that was Abstract Dream. 
haven't I got a fun job putting these all, there we go, 77 decoupage papers. Goodness, that's a fun fact. I've got a great job of putting these all back in there. Um, I'm just checking. 77 is just on this size. So there's 77 different styles just on these medium sized, the decoupage. So this one is Evening Damask or Damask, however you prefer to say it. So again, this is one I would, I would probably recommend putting on a lighter background. Can you see where the white is popping through here? But it, you could always put it on dark. It depends. If you want to go moody, you can put these on, you know, a darker background. But it will really pop if you put it on light. And that one works, as I said, that one's, you're probably going to want to use that one in a portrait kind of situation. So you could maybe use it on a tall boy rather than a low and low and wide chest of drawers or something. Or, you know, like a inside a wardrobe door. I'm not going to put that in the ages. Um, this I've actually half used, so you'll get the idea. This is patina copper. So I've used the other half of this for a lampshade, but you get the idea. <laughs> But this, if you, if you close up, it's kind of got faux glitter running through it. And there's metallics. There's really pretty kind of marbling in there. So that's patina copper. What should we do next? Greenery. How do we fancy greenery? I'm going to move on to the big, the big A1 bad boys. Don't you worry, folks. So again, this is one that you probably haven't seen much. So I tried to pick some that you might not have seen. So this is greenery. Um, so it, there's not much explaining needs doing, but again, this would be best on a white background to really make those details pop. It's got amazing quality printing of kind of very botanical herbs and, and wildflowers, I would say they all are types of wildflowers. There's a little bit of script there, but it's quite a cute design. You could make some your own wall art if you're into greenery. It's just a very natural, I don't know where the packet for that one's gone. Gothic Rhapsody. This was one of my favourites from um, whenever this last lot of designs were released. It was quite a, a popular one, I think. Um, I also made a lampshade out of one of these. And it's got a real kind of moodiness to it, quite quite gothic, hence its, its name, Gothic Rhapsody. It's got a bit of steampunkish uh, feel about it. It's kind of rusty and crusty and beautifully moody, this one. So we've got all kind of sepia tones in here, browns and rusty. Can you imagine like this section here, we see here, like layering over the top. The other, that's the other thing about these, there's, there's no coatings on them. You can paint over them, you could stencil over them, you can apply any of our other products like um, the chalk paste, the icing paste, any of those things. Rust paste is something I've been using quite a lot lately and because there's rust sections in this, this would look absolutely beautiful if you kind of layered rust sections on it just to give it some real, you know, real feel texture. I think that would be amazing. But again, beautiful details, close-ups. And that section there, so it gets moody in the corner. Really lovely. And that is Gothic Rhapsody, that one. Just as a reminder. Let's do a floral one. Let's do a floral one. Painted, painted Shed by Emma, yes. Gothic Rhapsody is awesome. So this one, I think it's called Vintage Wallpaper. It is. So this is a bit more muted, but just beautiful, again, beautiful details in these designs. So this has got quite a grey um, tone to it, but grey is still quite a popular colour for furniture here in the UK. And it really does have that vintage wallpaper feel. Um, you know, muted tones, not really green, even in the foliage. Just a hint of the kind of centres of the flowers is a creamy yellow. Again, I would say you'd want to put that over quite a light base or you could put it over 
uh, a grey. I think Ros did a grey panel yesterday. Just so that you keep those. You might not want the whites to pop quite that white. Owling dog, you use the gothic on a guitar makeover. Oh my goodness, I would love to see that. I'm going to have to try and find that. So that one's vintage wallpaper. And then we have, let's look at Distress Deco. It's one that I've wanted to use and I've not got round to it yet. Okay, so this one has, this one can be used e anyway. It can go that way because we have a bit of writing at the top that goes that way. But we also have a bit of writing that goes that way on the bottom in landscape mode. So it's really kind of, it really doesn't matter. Um, I don't think actually the camera does this one huge justice because it's really, really, really pretty. It's kind of sketchier in some areas. It's faded. It's got that real distressed finishes. Again, it's quite wallpapery in the all over print. Um, there's a tiny bit of lace going on at the edges here, I think. Do you think that looks like lace? I think that's flaring on the, on the light a bit, just a little bit. So that one's cute. And again, you've got this lovely acry kind of blue that you could pick up or maybe a Tiffany type blue. Really pretty. So we're down to the last couple of, of designs. If there is any design that you haven't seen or you like the look of, but you want a closer look, I haven't got all of them, but I have got quite a stack. So if there's anything I've not shown you, but you might want to look at, pop it in the comments and I will um, see if I've got it. Okay, I'm going to do the last two. So we've got Olivia and I think I've used half of this as well. I use this for a plant stand. Yes, oh look at that, I've hardly got any left to show you. Get the right side, there we go. But you get the idea. <laughs> look, there's a big curve cut out bit where it was the top of the plant stand. Um, so this has got quite a sort of subtle sage green. The flowers are a little bit softer on this one. So they're not quite so sharp in detailing, but it was one of the, when the, this batch was released, this was, this was the first one I got pulled out to use. Really beautiful. So I'm, I'm not even gonna try and pretend I can fold that back up quickly. And this is another favorite. I've got this on one of my bedsides, my vanities, not vanities, nightstands. This is Patina Flourish. So again, if you like that grungy sort of look and patina, can you buy them in Holland? I will pop a, um, a link in the comments for you to find a retailer. And if there's not one in Holland, we can probably sort you out someone in the UK that can help. Um, so yes, this is gorgeous. I'm gonna put it back that way a little bit so you can all see. So again, we've got some kind of really subtle petrally peacock kind of tones here. We've got the rusty, crusty, faded damask patterns. And it kind of looks like we've got some rustiness going on, just general patina. So that one's a real favorite. So yeah, I've got this on the draw sides of one bedside set. I've got this one because that kind of petrol tone is my favorite. And then there's a blue version, which my husband's got because he loves blue. That's not too stereotypical at all, is it? Okay, so we're on to the big bad boys, the A1s. These are the crown, the jewels in the crown, should I say, of our decoupage paper. So A1 gives you a little hint of the size, which is 23.4 inches by 33.1. So it's very, very specific. <laughs> um, and that's probably down to the size of the printers. So again, we've got a variety of designs. This isn't all of them. We've got some in portrait, some in landscape. Let's get, which one should we get out first? Let's get, this was quite a, a popular one. So we'll start with this. So this one's called Peaceful. And so this is back to um, more like the smaller rice papers. So you'll see the, can you see, no you can't. You can. Yeah, you can see the filaments here. You see the filaments? So it's more of that traditional rice slash mulberry style paper. Now, straight away, when you take these out of the packets, you can feel the quality. 
I sound like I'm on a market trading. I'm not, I promise. Um, but you really, really can. So even in the darks, you can see the filaments. But look at the depth of colour here. Can you see all those beautiful details? The A1 designs are a much more painterly, um, artistic kind of designs. So they're not all over patterns. They're all um, artworks in themselves. So, you know, you can really see... Try and get my hand under it it's so big like the brush strokes or should i say this is probably more like an oil painting so even here this is this is not texture that you can feel this is texture that's printed and it looks like an oil painting so on the lighter colors you can see the filaments better there we go on that part there really you can see those very well on instagram facebook there we go that's a bit better get the angle right so these are, they are just amazing. They take a lot, the, the printing is very special on these because they're bigger. Um, they take a long time and um, they've, been, they've been created specifically for bigger, bigger projects. Um, they don't, so something to note, which I haven't covered yet, is you'll note that all of them come in flat packages now. So Love Affair, this, these are beautiful. They're all packaged flat um, for a number of reasons. It's easier for the retailers to send out to you guys. It's easier for them to store in their shops. Um, it's obviously easier for transporting from, from the factories. Um, but that does mean that they have fold lines. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my iron and my ironing board and show you how easy it is to deal with that in a second. So when, if you've ever used the normal decoupage papers, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quickly backtrack ever so slightly. These are the previous packaging. So you might have some of these in your stash. You might have a retailer that still has some of these in their stock. There's nothing wrong with these. They're basically the same product. The two tubes, um, when you do, if you, if you ever have these, then they don't come as one whole piece. So you'll get exactly the same size, but it will be in two pieces. So if you have these, you just have to treat it almost like um, lining wallpaper up. When you create a join when you wallpaper, that's how you do it. We didn't have, we didn't have the fold lines, but you have something else to deal with. But they still work perfectly well. I've still got a lot of these in my stash and I'm going to work my way through them. That's not going to go back in there right now. So yeah, that was... Uh, that were the original ones with the plastic tubes. Then came the cardboard tubes. And, and then when we started doing these other sizes, it became, it became better to use flat packaging for all of them. So I am going to talk to you about these, these lines here, the fold lines. But they're easy to get rid of. So that's great. Um, but these kind of, when you're applying them, they don't crease, they don't ripple, you don't get wrinkles. You're very, very likely to, uh, sorry, very, very unlikely to get air bubbles. Um, they can go around curves, so you can really get um, a much more smooth finish because you can kind of wrap it around your piece of furniture. Um, and the, the pigments and the colours and the printing process is really, really strong. I'm going to move on to a different design so that we don't just keep looking at that one. While I'm chatting away, just pop that down there. Which one should we look at next, folks? So that was, um, let's look at this one, Gentle Friends. This is so cute and I have not managed to get to use this yet and I don't understand why, but I love it. So this is a portrait one. Let's get it unfolded. There we go. So this is a, a little girl with pigtails kissing her pony. You. Hi from Turkey. Um, so again, you can see the filaments, especially like where her, the white is on her shirt. And I just love it. It gives it a really handmade quality. So it, these are really, really tough as well. You, you can tear them. So you can blend the edges of this if you want to tear rather than have this kind of cut edge. Um, so the middle ones are the tricky ones to tear. You can do on these. Um, I was going to say something very important and it's gone out of my head. Right, the colours. So the way this is printed, they're very, very, very strong colours. You can actually switch these around. It doesn't, you, you get a slightly more kind of worn and faded look. 
and obviously when you apply your medium that will um that will intensify the colors but you still get it a little bit faded to the the correct side but you can apply these back to front and still get a really kind of aged vintage looking image so that's the back i have it on now so you can see how strong those print colors are um, same as the other ones you can paint on these you can add uh, anything anything over the top of these you can transfer over them you can stencil over them you can put chalk paste icing paste the rust paste patina paste anything that you want to add to these you can you're not going to ruin it there's no coating everything you want to use will stick to these papers there's nothing waxy or glossy to, to stop anything you want to do um, sticking so yeah the matte finish also helps with blending the edges if you want to do that and because you've got all these colors going on it's a really really they're really great designs to incorporate into any of your larger projects you can you know you can really make a full design even if this, these don't quite fit you can you can really add extra coloring all around them okay so who wants to see another one of these designs shall i open up another couple maybe we'll just look at the, the beautiful designs that we've got what have we got here uh, this is quite a cute one actually riviera let's show this Yeah, both sides of the paper are awesome on these. Really, really cool. So yeah, this is Riviera. Whoops, Riviera. And again, as I said, they're all kind. They're all very um, art print style on these. So how beautiful is that? And I can see that on the front of a nice kind of Victorian chest of drawers. You know, she's got quite a, a solemn but thoughtful look on her face. I just think there's some really, really beautiful designs in these papers. And again, let's flip that one over. So again, if you wanted to, um, if you just wanted the, the balance wasn't right and you want to have the reverse, you can do it with these papers. Okay, let's leave that there. I'm gonna, Flip my iron on and get my iron set up. It will take, oops, no, sorry. It will only take a second or two for that to heat up. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to sort those creases out. So let's grab one that I've got here. Which one should we do? I'll show up on that one. So this is one of the, the medium sized papers. So this is the biggest range of designs. Let's pop that there. So you can all see that crease running through the middle, can't you? You definitely can on Instagram. Yeah, you can. So sometimes, me personally, I like to have my, my work material completely flat, especially if I've got to measure, say, a draw front or something. Um, just because, you know, if that's not sitting flat, it could change your measurement by even a couple of millimetres could make all the difference. So I like to do this before i cut anything if i've got to make any cuts you want to use a cool to medium iron at most especially on these ones because um a bit like interfacing you you could melt it i'm just putting out that as a warning if you're concerned about scorching it you could add some baking parchment paper kind of stuff on the top if you wanted to oh my. but literally this is i've got this on about a medium heat and I've just realised that my cable's not going to stretch quite so far because I had it set at a different place earlier. So I'm actually just move it to this part of the... So I'm just running it over really gently. I'm not putting any pressure on at all. Can you all see that? You can. Good, 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 good. So I'll show you where I've been and where I've not been yet. But you see, I haven't added any parchment paper. The crease is completely gone. This is where the crease still is, see, where I haven't gone over yet. Can you see the difference? So you've now got a completely flat. So you can iron them. It's, a, it's genius. <laughs> and I know it's so simple, but I was worried to iron them for a while. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna try it. And it works really well. I'm just folding it back up for the purposes of going back in its packet. 
Um, do you know what? Look, this has got loads of creases. Do you remember this one that was in the bottom of my drawer? It's been wedged there. Let's, let's see if it will work on that. Again, I'm just going cool to medium iron. This is about medium. It's not, it's really not very hot. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to put my hand on it, but it's not that hot. And look, the creases have disappeared as if by magic. Um, I tend not to use a steam setting, if anyone's asking that, I'm not sure. I can't see my comments right now. I don't use a steam setting because I don't, particularly these ones, I don't want to get them wet. Um, like wet, wet. Putting a medium on is different, but I don't want to get them wet. But you can see how they disappeared, those creases and all those lines. Brilliant. It's gone. It's like magic. Um, and let's, just to prove that it works on the big A ones as well, let's do that as well. So you can see there's a big old crease going down through the middle, isn't there? Not crease, a fold. My iron's not stretching far enough. Let me see what I can do. Yes. So on these ones, you might see it a tiny bit still, but I promise you, the actual, the actual fold is gone. And once you've added your decoupage medium, it disappears completely. So the, the I keep calling it a crease. It's a fold line. That does go away. And then as you smooth out with your decoupage medium, they will disappear as well. So there we go. So this is where I haven't quite got to and I've done these. So you can, you can kind of see it, but as I said, as soon as you start to add your decoupage medium and it starts pulling, pulling through and sticking to the surface, the final bit will just disappear and melt away as well. Oops. How am I doing for time? Have I covered everything I wanted to cover? I have got a few of the decoupage mediums just to show you and run down quickly. I know Roz talked about quickly some of them and I know I think the other girls will cover them quickly as well, but very, very quickly, I am going to show you. The soft matte gel, so, um, and you can also get soft gloss gel. So this is, this product has been around for a while it is sticky stuff, guys. It even has, oh crikey, there we go. So it's thick, can you see? That is not gonna come out of there. <laughs> oh, wrong way around, there we go. So that is sticky stuff. Um, I recommend any of these mediums that you use, um, uh, I would wear gloves. It's so sticky, it's, you know, like school glue and you can peel it off. This sticks to you like school glue, but it doesn't peel off the same. <clears throat> Wear gloves, please. <laughs> it will be around for a long time. If you've got some of this in your stash, um, heavy body gel, this is even thicker. So in a pinch, you could use this, but it's, um, it is a lot thicker. This is more for, I can't get the seal off even. I think it's stuck itself to the seal. No, I can't get it off. I thought I had an open, oh, there we go, it has been opened. You can see how much thicker even that that is. Yes, Owling Dog, it is on your, it, for days, exactly. So this is even thicker. This is kind of more for paper crafts if you're sticking gems and things to hold, you know, small pieces of additional trinkets and things into, you know, like a mixed media project. But as I said, in a pinch, if you've got it in your stash, you can use this and then, um, I'm going to come to the last of the ones that I've got in my stash to show you. This is the most recent product that Redesign with Prima has launched. And it's the decoupage gel in matte and shine. So obviously shine is the gloss version. Um, again, these are like almost even stickier than the gels. They look exactly the same in the pot. They don't, that one I've not even opened. There we go. I'm not going to open that, but they look the same. All of these dry clear. They hold your paper really, really well, um, but wear gloves. And then um, there's, there's still, there's other, there's other methods. There's other things to use. Um, Ros yesterday talked about Mod Podge. 
Um, there's Elmer's glue, school glue, PVA, watered down. Um, you could use a spray, you know, your favorite spray mount. You can use water-based top coats. I've got, um, I work with Paint Couture, so I use their satin and flat top coats for this. There's so many things that you may already have in your stash um, that you can work with, but I definitely recommend giving these decoupage gels a go. If you've kind of run to the bottom of whatever pot you're using, or you know you fancy something, or it's a new a new endeavor, go for something like this because you'll find it easier to apply your paper to these than say the top coats that are quite you know in comparison runny. But the good thing is as well, while it's still wet, if you position these wrong, you can move them, you can peel them back up again and stick them back down. Not so much with the small ones because they're thinner and they're more like a traditional tissue paper. Even with the filaments, you wouldn't want to be repositioning these too often. But with the, um, the medium sized ones, especially, and these ones, these are repositional, uh, repositionable until you need to. Love Affair, who makes it? The decoupage gel, these are redesigned with Prima products. Everything I've shown today, all redesigned with Prima. Absolutely everything. So I hope I've covered, I've covered as much as I think I can cover, apart from showing you literally every single design in the whole decoupage paper range. Um, but I really wanted to just kind of get down to the nitty gritties and show you up close and personal if you haven't seen any of these. The differences so i hope it's been informative i hope it's helped um i hope you maybe have seen a paper that you haven't seen before or one that you thought about getting and now you want to go ahead and get it um so thanks for joining me um if you uh i think ros tell me if i'm wrong is it is it vilma's next tomorrow so don't forget that there's there's still we're showing you a different thing to do with decoupage every day this week um and i think yes I'm pretty sure she said it was filming next week. <laughs> uh, next, next tomorrow, sorry. Um, thanks for joining me, guys. Don't forget, if, there's, if you're watching this on replay, drop me a hashtag replay. If you want to pop over to Gracie's house and like, follow, love page, whatever you need to do, Instagram, that's Gracie's underscore house UK. And I will see you again next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.